This is the most makeshift tripod setup, and we have a cat that I kind of like. I'm doing a casual video today. I'm just showered. I still have wet hair. We're in my bedroom rather than out in front of my bookshelves. Um, but I just wanted something a little bit more casual, especially since we're all working from home now, so the living room with the bookshelves is kind of loud. But um, today, we're doing my owl's TBR. my scarf but we're past that now so um i have my notebook here and a big pile of books beside me and i'm going to talk about what i'm going to be reading for the owls read of them so i have allocated a physical book for every single prompt um in uh so all 12 subjects and also the dragon training add-on which technically i don't qualify for so that would be the book I did, like prioritize least. But if I get through everything else, I'll try and read it. I did also intentionally pick this TBR to hit all the things I normally hit with my jar pulls. So two books that are 2019 releases, two books that I purchased in 2019 but were backlist, um, one book that's been on my TBR forever, um, and a 2018 purchase. Um, I also have an audiobook planned, but it doesn't fit any of the prompts. None of these are audiobooks. Or one is, but I'm not going to read it on audiobook because it's mixed media and I'm excited. Oh, I might read along at the same time, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but I do have a bunch of audiobooks that I would like to get to. They're just not part of the hours, so I'm not going to talk about them today. Um, yeah. I also have a couple of other books that I might try and get to, but we'll see. We're going to talk about these ones. These are the important ones. Cats are really making a fuss. <laughs> So the first uh, subject is Ancient Runes. Oh, I will link all the Owls details below for G's video, etc, etc. I feel like everyone nowadays knows what the Owls Readathon is, but just in case you didn't, the Magical Readathon. Um, so the first one is Ancient Runes, which is a book with a heart on the cover or in the title. And for that, I'm going to be reading The Hearts We Sold by Emily Lloyd-Jones, obviously. Has a heart on the cover. I think this is a, like, Frankenstein-y kind of retelling. So, um... It says, losing your heart is easy. Getting it back is another story. Oh, she sells her heart to the devil. Um, and she's trying to get it back, I think. But I love Emily Lloyd Jones. I've enjoyed everything else she's written. So this is the only thing left I have to pick up before I'm fully up to date on her. That's not backlist, pub list. Um, so I definitely want to pick this up. This is a 2019 backlist purchase. I just didn't draw from the jar because I was trying to make challenges. That wasn't obvious. Um, the next one is Arithmancy, something outside your favourite genre. And for that, I'll be reading Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is a YA, I believe, historical fiction fantasy. Um, I'm going to be buddy reading this with Paige from Pages of Paige. Um, she got this for me as a gift. You'll see it in my book haul. Um, and we're going to read it together. I believe it's a wartime romance, but told by Aphrodite and... Hades? Or a bunch of... Uh, as told by Aphrodite, but I think it features a lot of the Greek gods. Um, I'm very excited about this. It seems like a fun format, and I'm like... I love that kind of thing. So, I'm excited to read this. Everyone's been giving it rave reviews as well, so that's super positive. Then, for Astronomy, is read a book entirely at night. Um, and <laughs> double-edged sword of this one, I'm going to be reading... <laughs> Nocturna by Maya Mottain. Um, this is a 2019 release, um, so it came from that set of my bookshelves. Um, obviously, Nocturna, night, but I will try and read it predominantly at night as well. Um, I did actually end up drawing this, I think, from the jar because I knew I wanted something from that section. Um, but I wasn't particularly fussy about what, and then this came up and it was just, it was just perfection. Um, this is a YA fantasy, um, Mexican inspired, I think. Um, and there is classic, like, thief and stuff kind of dynamics. Um, I am very excited about this. A Faceless Thief, A Desperate Prince, A Darkness Unleashed. I know the sequel comes out this year. Um, I'm very excited to check this one out. Then for Care of Magical Creatures um, with a, a book featuring a beaked animal. Have I been out of focus this whole time? Fuck, I hope not. Um, I'm going to be reading <laughs> Heart of Flames by Nikki Parprotto. This features phoenixes, so beaked animals. It is 
chunky. It's like 700 pages, I think. 600 pages. Um, this is the sequel to Crown of Feathers, which I thought was a bit info dumpy. Suffered from like debut book syndrome. Um, but it had a lot of potential and I really liked the ending. So I decided to pick up the second book in the duology. It is only a duology. Um, and I'm going to try and read that this month for this prompt. It is chunky though. So we'll see how we go. Then for Charms is a book with a white cover. And for that, hopefully if my coffee actually ships and we don't end up with a hold on shipping or something, um, I'm going to be reading Ruthless Gods by Emily Duncan, Emily A. Duncan for this challenge. This is the sequel to... I'm blanking. <laughs> Wicked Saints, which I liked, but there were definitely some problems with it. I'm interested to see where book two goes. I did enjoy my time reading Wicked Saints, so I'm definitely interested in picking up book two, uh, and I'm going to try and read that. Then for Defense Against the Dark Arts, we want a book set at sea. And for that, I'm going to read The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. This is a... Um, it says 1984 meets the Umbrella Academy, but the reason I picked this up was I'm pretty sure the main character is like a, a magical social worker. Um, he's a caseworker at the department in charge of magical youth. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company, but his quiet life is about to change. There are six dangerous magical children. Um, they're likely to bring about the end of days, and he's going to tra travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine that and i'm pretty sure there is a male male romance in this i think i think this is queer um uh yeah that just sounds so interesting and i'm so excited to read it, it is a adult fantasy really there's like no space on this camera okay we've cleared up some camera space <laughs> um what was the same so the next one is divination a random number generator so i just kind of did this um from my 2019 backlist purchases. Obviously, I did love camera. I did all this a while ago because I was trying to plan it out. Um, but for that, I'm going to be reading Radiance um, by Catherine M. Valente. This is one that an audiobook is available on Scribd, but it's told in like a mixed media format. So although I think it's all text, I kind of want to be able to see the different changes in how it's written. It has like um, different like movie formats and stuff so this is about film um she's the daughter of a world famous film director and inherited his love for filmmaking uh, for um the big screen but not his gothic style of filmmaking she makes documentaries um for she is a realist in a fantastic alternate universe in which the solar system contains all manner of creatures cults and colonies so she's going to venus to investigate the disappearance of a diving colony that sounds so cool i picked this up secondhand from a library sale and it's like in really good nick um so i'm definitely keen to pick this up then we have herbology so then it starts with an m and for that i'm going to be reading the Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. This is the um, first in a sequel or spin-off duology to The Winner's Curse. I can definitely acknowledge that The Winner's Curse has like a strong, it's got a strong slavery plotline and that is a bit weird. But um, I, when I read it when I was much younger, I did enjoy the writing and the, um, the uh, chemistry, I guess, between the characters. Not the dynamic, but like, the way they pined after each other. Um, this has a bit of a different um, layout, but it's set in the same world, I believe. Um, and it features a female-female romance. I've heard a lot of great things about the queer representation in here. Um, and I am very excited to see what I think about it. I do love this cover. It is gorgeous. Then for History of Magic, we need something featuring witches and wizards. And for that, I'm going to be reading um, Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. Obviously, it's got witches in the cover. It's a witchy book. Um, I believe it's set in Ireland. She's got um, the main character, Dana, has somatic OCD. She was outed as being bisexual in a conservative Irish town. Um, but she's finally becoming a full witch. But then another coven comes to town. Um, I don't know much about the actual plot, but I've heard some great things about this. And it just seems right up my witchy alley. Um, I love reading witchy books. I struggle with spiritual stuff myself. Like, I don't feel particularly spiritual, but I love, 
um, the aesthetic and vibes of witchy books, so I'm really excited to read this. Then for Muggle Studies, we need to read a contemporary. And for that, I'm going to be reading Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. This is... That was my phone. Sorry. This is a um, contemporary about there trying to save something. Uh, I don't know. It's a small town coming of age story um, featuring a strong friendship group is what I believe um, and I don't know this just appeals to me on so many levels I've had it on my shelf for a little while this was something that this was one of the 2018 purchases um, so I picked that up for this for Transfiguration is something featuring shape-shifting and for that I'm going to try reading A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I don't know what I'm going to think about this. I'm so like torn. Everyone's loved this one or actually no it was pretty divisive on this one and very divisive in book two. So um, I don't know it's been sitting on my shelf for a while. This is a 2019 release and yeah I thought I'd give it a try. It definitely fits this challenge as a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then finally for the dragon training is obviously a book featuring dragons. Um, and if I get around to it, I'll be reading The Dragon's Apprentice um, by Douglas A. Steer. This is the third volume in the like no novelization set that goes with the Dragonology books. Yeah, um, I read book two not that long ago, um, like sometime last year. And I picked this up secondhand. Um, and I need to get around to it. It's only like 300 pages, even though it looks chunkier than that. Um, so we'll see if I can get around to this. It's going to be like the lowest priority, but uh, we'll see. So we had a book that's been on my TBR forever, even though it technically hasn't, but this series has. Um, a book that's a 2018 purchase, some 2019 releases. And some backlist purchases I made in 2019. So that kind of fulfills all our TBR jars. Also, if we're looking at the books for my career, I think I decided on the spell maker career. I think that's what I wrote down for. So the things I would have to read for that, like which I will prioritize The Hearts We Sold, Lovely War, Nocturna, Ruthless Gods, Radiance, Witches of Ash and Ruin. And Curse of Dark and Lonely. So if I'm prioritizing my career, which I will try and do, I'll read those first <laughs> and then get to the others. But I am trying to get to as many of these as I can in the month. Um, I'm excited about a lot of the new releases and I've got other new releases that if I slam through all of these, I would love to also read. But uh, we'll see how we go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down below if you're participating in the hours and feel free to link me to your TBI in whatever format you have it. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!